Hey guys, I'm gonna show you a pickup. Pretty cool pickup. Did arrive on my birthday, so that's always nice. Uh, not really a huge pickup. I have a bigger one coming in. A lot of the pickups I had got stuck in Japan. And let's go ahead and see what I got here. So we've got a lot of Wheel of Fate. There's two of them. There's a Ditto, Heavy Play Ditto, Edge Issue. Don't really know what that means, but okay. Uh, Oshinoko, this should be near mint. And then uh, a card like this, 9.9.9.5s. Uh, this is Azure Lane. So this is the big one out of this lot. It is Ruby. So we're going to get her mom, maybe multiples of that. Uh, and now I'm going to open this. So this is Inuyasha cards. As you know, I'm always buying Inuyasha cards. I will negotiate with you because, or I guess I won't negotiate with you because honestly, there's no one, I, I know what the cards sell for. I'm well aware because I'm probably the only buyer <laughs> of these cards. I would not be shocked at all if it turned out I was one of the only buyers of this particular card. Kagome, uh, Chibi Inuyasha. I got it for the Kagome. Basically, it was like a $50, $40 shipping. It says Shumaru Ultra Rare. Oh, there's like somebody's hair there. Uh, another Ultra Rare. So some subsets, some Ultra Rares, pretty cool stuff. Uh, he even sent uh, these, which it's been a long time since I've seen them. But they come from uh, every booster pack you open, they would give you one of those. And I just love, you know, I love Inyasha a lot. And it's getting harder and harder. There's not much of a, you know, there's not much of an audience, honestly. It is a dead card game, and my advice for dead card games is appreciate them while you can, if you enjoy it, because eventually the product will run dry, even though this product has been here for a great deal of time. There are some foils, says Shumaru foils. I guess this is the foil pile. So it looks like there's a foil pile here. Yeah, what I would say is if you love something, you should actually try to pick it up when when you can get it. Because you won't, trust me as someone who knows, you won't always be able to get it. Uh, there are times where you think you can get it. Oh, here's some more foils. So, love uh, Yura, big fan of Yura. These are not first edition, by the way. These are, uh, it's very hard to get first edition to Saga. That's the equivalent of base, I guess. Strong punch. Some more foils. Came in a Ziploc bag like the Odin days, right? When cards just came in Ziploc bags. Oh, here's some more foils here. I'm gonna have to figure out how this is organized. And here is probably more foils. This is a kind of sideways. Yeah, back in the olden days, we kept all of our cards, even the cards we wanted to trade with each other, in Ziploc bags. So, reminds me of the good day. So, the reason I bought this lot, a lot of Tesaga. Tesaga is the first set. And to be quite honest with you, it's probably the best set, in my opinion. Uh, it didn't actually have a subset. So, that's kind of weird. But uh, other than that, it was a pretty awesome set, I would say, all things considered. So big card here. Uh, we're gonna show you the other Oshino codes very soon. This is Ruby. Um, the the guy in Japan. Just I don't know what the hell he was doing the whole time. Uh, but finally, when I threatened to cancel it, then he uh, shipped it. Like it took him maybe two weeks, like ten days, ten days, to ship it. Even though like it was paid for on the night of. So it's really bizarre. You know, this is a pretty cool card. Don't really know much about Azure Lane. I'm trying to pick up the whole set. And you know, there's a lot of really great Azure Lane cards. I don't really care about the grades. Like I mentioned before, grading is not uber important to me uh, personally. Um, it's not something I really care about. Um, I just kind of want the card. And to get it protected is really, really important. And like if it's shipping from Japan, I have to buy just graded cards because they always come damaged. I, I, I had the same problem with Fire Emblem Heroes. I would buy these cards and for $400 and they would all come like damaged or lost. 
Like with BGS, at least it's not gonna, it still might be lost. I only really lost. I lost one big package in Fire Emblem Heroes. Didn't get reimbursed. FedEx was a piece of shit, you know. I, I just didn't. And after that, I lost that big package. I didn't buy no more. And I was like, okay, I'm not buying anymore. The seller, it was on Amazon. It was a really bad experience. Amazon would refuse to refund it to me. Then they say it was FedEx's fault. And then FedEx refused because they delivered it. They delivered an empty. So here's something to know. If they deliver an empty package to your home, that will count as delivered, which means it's no longer Amazon's problem. You have to make sure the guy doesn't scan the code. So I saw him delivering an empty package and then I ran out like almost half naked to like get the guy. And then he went in, he checked the back of the car. He made like a big fuss. I, I'm pretty sure he stole it. And that's why I told the manager is like, hey, like, you know, how, why would he deliver? He's, and, and there's the same dude. He delivered so many boxes before. So they all come in the same little envelope. They call, I mean, he has delivered probably at that point in time, 500 booster boxes from Japan to me. So he knows exactly what's inside them because he's delivering them to my door every day. And then suddenly he delivers one where there's supposed to be, I think four booster boxes in it. And they were the higher end boxes, by the way. And he probably could tell from the customs, like they actually have like a custom value. Like, he could, like the post office dude, he knows exactly what is in your mail because he can figure out like if it's from international. Cause in the custom form, you have to like declare a certain value. So this particular value, and I told him this, had like $400 worth of booster boxes which is more than the normal boxes that he sees me buy. And then suddenly they go to, and so again, it has the ounce, it has how much it weighs. This isn't like a letter. So I caught him, I actually caught him and videotaped it. And it was a very bizarre experience, but yeah, I mean, F FedEx, right? Uh, it was, it was just very bizarre. You know, I'm, you know, I don't even have a t-shirt on cause I caught, I knew exactly what he was going to do. Uh, the moment I saw him, I knew he was going to do it because he had already tried to do that before. I already noticed some of the packages being open the previous day. So I actually wanted to talk to him and ask him, hey, did it come this way? Like, you know, hey, it doesn't look safe. So the previous day from me catching him stealing, um, I actually noticed that my package was like, it, it was kind of like cut open to see what's inside it. And I, I wanted to ask him, like, did he cut it open? Did someone else cut it open? Is there like, you know, safety? protocols, calls that he can make sure. And then the very next day, cause I wanted to actually go out and cause he comes in same time every day. It's the same driver. Um, I wanted to go out and, and I have this, I actually have all the photos cause I sent it to myself and I have, I think the video too. And I had to send all this evidence FedEx. They didn't give a damn. They had like some type of manager contact me, but they didn't resolve. So I was out about $400 from Japan. So now I'm very cautious when I order stuff, I usually order stuff from Japan all the time. I still kind of do for anime figures, but that's like uh, something called, uh, what what is it called? It's like next day, it's like EMS, electronic mail. I, I don't know why they call it that, but it gets to your home in like two days from Japan. So I, I only do that for anime figures. I only do that. It, it's not as expensive as you would believe. Anyway, hi guys.